Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name's Austin Van Churn. And my name's Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back today. Um, we're back using Google Hangouts as well. And we got a really good show for you guys today, including a roster announcement, Pat, for the upcoming games against Brazil and Mexico. That's so right, really Austin. excited to do that. I'm repping it right here. You can see the little scarf I got right in the, <laughs> you know, it's still kind of the end of summer, but uh, just repping it for the friendlies, you know? Hey, that's right. That's what you got to do. So, uh, yeah, let's get into our episode. So the first player we want to cover in today's episode would be DeAndre Yedlin. So, Pat, how did DeAndre Yedlin look this weekend? That's very really awesome. So DeAndre Yedlin had a fantastic uh, weekend. Uh, he actually grabbed an, a, a nice goal, his first Premier League goal, by the way. So uh, hey. congrats to Yedlin there. Yeah, but um, yeah, so unfortunately they lost 2-1 to Man City. It's a you know, tough opponent there. But again, uh, just watching the highlight of that, that incredible run, I think Yedlin actually got a little past uh, the half there and uh, beat his old, I believe it was his old uh, uh, Tottenham uh, back there, Kyle Walker, if I'm not mistaken, or one of, one of the city uh, backline players there and sprinted all the way past half, made a great back post run and Solomon Rondon found him, uh, you know, nice little through ball across the uh, the line there and, you know, Yedlin just kind of uh, finessed it in. But it was a fantastic run, pretty intelligent and uh Again, uh, Yedlin's really coming into a great form right before this uh, U.S. camp and some friendlies coming up, Austin. Yeah, no, that's very true. He, uh, he had a pretty good game, too, I thought. You know, obviously Man City's a really tough opponent. But, um, you know, he looked dangerous going forward uh, all game. And like you said, that, that goal was just, you know, using his pace and getting by a Man City defender and, uh, you know, capitalizing on a good cross to him. At least a good yeah. pass. Yeah, absolutely. And then another uh, keynote to bring up, uh, I know Benitez has been kind of playing a little bit with the back three, and Yedlin's uh, yeah. uh, seems to be thriving a little more. And he's getting used to it, but he, he really enjoys it, likes the freedom to go and attack more. And I know we were talking a little bit off camera before the U.S. kind of uh, could play in a back three as well, and that we could see Yedlin thrive in that role as well. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, wing back position, or as a right wing back, I guess, for him, would be, you know, a, g- a great position for him. It utilizes, you know, that speed that we, uh, we've we all seen from Yedlin. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if, if given the opportunity in a three back system, I think he could really thrive going forward. And we've started to see that in the Premier League. And, you know, we saw that, I, uh, well, I guess he didn't play against France or did he? I can't even remember now. Yeah, it's been so <laughs> time ago, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's been so long ago. So much has happened since. But um, yeah, it'd be exciting to see. Uh, you know, if he plays in these these two upcoming friendlies, I think he will play. But uh, you know, yeah, we'll 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 see what he can do because I feel like they're going to play a three back system. The U.S. that is. Um, I like agree with you. They're awesome. But you know, like you said before, we'll talk about that. I guess a little bit more when we. Uh, go into our uh, roster uh, portion of this episode. But well, Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so DeAndre looked good this weekend. Another player that looked good, Pat, and who would that be? That's right. So our, our boy on, on loan in the Netherlands there, Andrea Novakovic, uh, got his, his second goal there, uh, accounting for two of four uh, goals for us, Fortuna Sitard there. Uh, unfortunately, they did draw, so they haven't really won a game yet, but... Uh, Andrija has looked, you know, pretty lively and active and has been, you know, starting again, which is fantastic. Um, His goal was just kind of a typical striker's goal, kind of a poacher, just being inside the box there. Uh, The ball kind of, it was kind of like a scramble and he just kind of, uh, I guess, kind of like curled it in with the right foot, but right place at the right Mm -hmm. time, Austin. And uh, that's what you want to see from a striker. Yeah. Absolutely. If we can, you know, keep having him score at the same rate he did last year, we'll be, uh, I think we'll be in business, at least for the, the U.S. men's national team. I think he'll be, uh, you know, a player that will consistently feature, at least in camps for us, um, if he can do that. But, you know, that's a big Absolutely. ask. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. But it seems like there's no, there's no uh, you know, mountain too tall for Andrea to climb. So, <laughs> so I mean, he's yeah. stepped it up in a better league um, with, you know, obviously a team that's come up and uh, I'm sure, you know, it 
they're not a team that's going to exactly have possession all, all game against some of these other top level teams. Right, but right. yeah, so to capitalize on you know the the few opportunities that Andrija has had, um, you know, in terms of just kind of countering and uh, being in the right, you know, like I mentioned before, the right you know place at the right time. Uh, a great, great sign and a great start for uh, hopefully many of years to come. Yeah, no, that's very true. And, uh, you know, let's hope we, we get to see him in uh, this upcoming camp and in these next few games. I I, I don't know. I, I really like Andrea, what he brings to the team and, you know, what he brings to the table, at least as a striker. I just think he has a lot of qualities that could suit him well going forward in his career and, you know, be very attractive, be a very attractive striker to a lot of teams. Um, Absolutely. So, and I know we yeah. might have touched on it a bit before, but maybe even it'd be nice to see him. Maybe even uh, obviously he has uh, you know back in the championship there uh, with Reading, but it would be <laughs> even great to see him maybe end up uh, still in the Eredivisie for uh, a top team like an Ajax or you know one of those teams competing for a Europa or Champions League spot. So uh, again, we'll we'll kind of see what happens, but it seems like the net. But I also just want to shift gears here, Austin, to uh, another okay. striker, <laughs> a younger striker here in uh, Germany who seems to be really just, you know, tearing it up and really deserves that first team uh, chance there. Yeah, and that would be uh, Josh Sargent. So Josh uh, just scored again in the most recent game for Werder Bremen's U23s. He actually uh, drew a penalty and then took the penalty and converted it. I believe it was in like the 87th uh, minute um, for his team. He also had an assist in that game. So uh, all in all, that makes uh, five goals in seven games uh, for Werder Bremen's U23s. So, you know, that's scoring at a pretty good, uh, pretty good rate uh, for Josh. And it was actually um, told to us by uh, Werder Bremen's first team manager in a statement that Werder Bremen put out um, that Josh Sargent will be taking part in a series of friendlies over this uh, international break. So it looks like Josh will actually get his uh, shot with the first team here coming up. And oh, nice. That's good to see, Austin. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good to see. I mean, Josh has started the year off, like you said, really, really strong for the U23s. Um, was able to see um, some extended highlights of his most recent game, and he just looked, you know, really, really composed on the ball. Um, looked like he kind of has outgrown that U23 level. I don't want to say that maybe because – um, they were just highlights, so I guess they're the best, you know, clips from Josh in the game. But in each clip, he looked like he had a command of, you know, the ball in, in, in each highlight I saw and, you know, just was, was had command in the game. <laughs> so, awesome. um, yeah, I mean, he looked, he looked really good in those highlights. And, you know, it's good to see Josh hopefully getting this, this first team opportunity again after he had it this summer. Um, and let's hope he can, you know, capitalize it, on it now. And fingers uh, crossed, kind of, kind of stay with that first team, but we'll, yeah, and then, we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah, just to elaborate too on your point there. I mean, it. I, I mean, I, I understand the, the wording. I guess has outgrown the team. Uh, you know, not a, not. You know, too, we're both not fans of that, but it does yeah. kind of <laughs> feel like it just because of uh, the, the amount of goals he's been he's been scoring and producing. Like you said, again, we're just seeing the highlights, but to see all the highlights consist of not just you know, shots or nice runs. They are goals, 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 and goals. So if <laughs> yeah. the more he keeps, assists. Yeah, he's, assists. Had, he's gotten a few assists as well. That's so. right. So he, he can do it all. So I, I, I'm right there with you. He <laughs> should, right. he, I, I really feel like he's going to get that first team shot and uh, really cement himself into a, a Water Brennan's team there. Yeah. I mean, we can only hope and, you know, he's, he's showing at least if he, doesn't make it into that Werder Bremen first team. Maybe at some point he'll go out on loan. Maybe that's the the path that Werder Bremen chooses for him since, you know, like we were kind of saying, he, he might have outgrown that U23 level or at least be, has been one of their better players in all these uh, games that they've played so far this season. So maybe they try to get him an opportunity at a level up, but also not a level at Werder Bremen's first team um, at that level, maybe at a level at like a Bundesliga 2 team. That's but, a good um, point you bring up. Yeah, I agree. With I, that. I hope that's not the the way they go, the route they go, but <laughs> it's it's always possible. And you know, maybe if he plays at a higher higher level, then he gets even better, and it, it's good for his development. But you know, like we said, time will tell. And and you know, we're very confident in Josh Sargent's ability. So I think wherever he goes, I think he'll show 
you know, team that he's a player to, you know, play uh, in some capacity and has a, has a bright future no matter what. Um, Absolutely. Like you said, it seems like a really humble kid, just kind of grinding really hard, keeping his head down and uh, waiting for that chance. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with everything that you just said. So, all right. Well, now let's move over to England and talk about a player that we brought up uh, recently, and that would be Dwayne Holmes, Pat. So what has uh, Dwayne Holmes done uh, this past week? Yeah, so uh, Dwayne Holmes this past week finally made his uh, debut. I believe it was the, the EFL Cup. Am I, am I saying that right? Um, yeah, it was one of the Cups in England. They're still yeah, one, one of the Cups, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for Derby County um, and, and good old Lampard. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> yeah. On, uh, I think it was in the 70-something minute. Uh, Dwayne Holmes actually ended up picking up uh, a nice assist uh, in a beautiful little ball into, uh, I think it was Mason Mount, the old uh, Vitesse Ooh. guy. Uh, who finished it good off in the player. 89th minute. Yeah, yeah good player. Very but, good um, <laughs> yeah, but it's exciting to see him kind of get his, his debut for a solid team. I believe they're fourth in the championship right now. But, um, yeah. yeah was, I think they're, they're somewhere high up in the table already to start the season. So, yeah. And it seems to be it. <laughs> yeah, team to be it. Yeah, and it seems like uh, Lampard was pretty impressed. I thought I kind of you know, skimmed over an article uh, just saying – you know, he was, you know, not pleasantly surprised, but you know, very, very happy about the impact Dwayne Holmes was able to make off the bench there uh, against, uh, I believe it was whole city there. But again, someone to, uh, you know, who's really risen, like we said before, from league one of the championship and the way Derby County has been playing last year. And you know, even this year, they're right on the fringe of jumping over uh, up to the premier leagues. So we could have uh, Dwayne Holmes in the premier league, but don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but <laughs> I would have never have thought that at, uh, at the beginning of this season or even at the end of last year that that right. would have been a possibility. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, like scum throat. Scum, yeah, scum throat. But again, Austin, just kind of want to, I guess, highlight, I think, what my expectations for Dwayne Holmes is to break into that. Uh, he was on the 18, I think, most recently, um, a few days ago for the second leg. Oh, okay. uh, didn't That's get good. in. But just I think he needs to be at least a – you know, number one option substitute or really break his way into that lineup uh you know get some consistent game time and just to be an impactful sub for a team like that i think that's a a great start to uh you know at least a first year uh moving up to a significant league in my opinion yeah and i know when i was uh looking through twitter after that game um we had two assists uh i know a lot of people on twitter a lot of derby county fans were really excited about him and thought this is a guy that needs to get more minutes for them. Um, so, you know, he's got the support of the fans there at Derby County, which is, I guess, always huge. Um, you know, oh, when, yeah. when you're a player <laughs> that's trying to look to break into that first team and be a, a part of, uh, you know, the lineup every every game. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's really exciting to see uh, Dwayne Holmes finally, uh, you know, showing up and, and playing really well in a, in a higher league and at, at a higher level. That's right, Austin. And uh, just uh, you know, switching switching gears here over to uh, Denmark and uh, to another exciting and young player. Another yeah, and that's no other that's than right. that would be uh, Manuel Sabi, who actually scored again this weekend and played 67 minutes in uh, Hobro's 1-1 draw with another team in the Danish Superliga. I'm not even going to try to pronounce <laughs> their name when I saw it on uh, Footmob, great app. You should check it out. Shout so. Out to um, yeah, so so uh yeah, Manuel Sabi, uh pretty pretty good goal. It was uh, you know, a nice cross to him that he uh finished. He also had another really nice shot um earlier in the game. So he looked he looked, you know, from the highlights we saw, there are very limited amount of highlights, but he looked pretty active again in this game. Um it is something to note though that Hobro is, I believe, at the bottom of the table in the Danish Superliga, or at least towards the bottom. So um, even though Emmanuel Sabi's been been killing it, um, it's interesting to see that you know his team hasn't hasn't done so well to start the season. But um, yeah, I mean, again, Emmanuel Sabi, someone who continues to score this year, um, someone that was left off the U.S. men's national team roster most recently, which again, I guess we'll we'll talk about a little bit more uh, later on, Pat. But I don't know. Have you been impressed with uh, Emmanuel Sabi? so far this season and, and seeing some of the highlights of him see yeah. someone that um you know we should be just as excited about as we are right now or is he someone that maybe we should um kind of take a step back on and 
and reevaluate where he is right now since Hope yeah. is not doing great. But I mean, again, he's playing very well for that team. So. No, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think uh, I would kind of, I, w- I would say we uh, should be excited about him just in terms of his, uh, his goal scoring abilities. Uh, he's had some beautiful uh, goals that we've seen in, in the highlights. They have, but... been, they have been good goals. Yeah. I can't yeah. lie. Some nice goals and, Again, such such a young player that's just producing in in a you know European league, uh, which is you know always exciting. I guess uh, maybe uh, just being at a bottom team uh, in the Danish uh, Super League there maybe uh, you know isn't as exciting as some of the other you know, Yaz kind of in, in some of the bit, bigger leagues. But again, not to discredit anything he's doing, I think this is a a player that we should all be excited about and maybe could force a move in the next uh, season or two to a, uh, you know, a bigger uh, top tier team and get more on the U S uh, radar. Yeah, no, that's true. Maybe we could go to a team like uh Nordsjeland or uh, Mitchelland. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, right. <laughs> try his luck there. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, that's, uh, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I'm, I'm pretty excited for him to be honest with you, just from what we've seen. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see any, uh, you know, he, he's been playing on the wing and he also is a striker. So any player who has uh, that skill set to play in those yeah. positions. Um, we call it kind of like a utility so, player, sort of, multiple. Yeah, I would, yeah, utility player, like uh, a general attacker maybe or something yeah. like that. Kind of like what Tim Way, I guess, is uh, as well. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited about Emmanuel. Um, and now we want to move over to another player who moved this summer. And that would be uh, Brandon Hines Ike. So Pat, how has uh, Brandon looked this weekend? Yeah. So uh, again, uh, Hines Ike has looked fantastic. Actually, picked up, I believe, his uh, third assist. Um, so oh, okay. he, he's, on, he's on a roll. He had a cheeky little uh, flick, kind of. Uh, I think it was with the right side of the foot. Just kind of scooped it a few feet in the air over to the striker, and they uh, ended up tying. Uh, I think it's Gank three to three. Uh, who's oh, wow. you know they're actually in second place. And in the Belgian standings there. So uh, great result for uh, Kortrick there, who we've been obviously talking about with the EPB. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, again, it seems like Heinz Eich is a player, a center back, who's really getting on the radar of a lot of, a lot of soccer, uh, I guess, kind of commentators that we've been seeing throughout Twitter and just online um, that we should consider because uh, Ireland, Ireland could also snatch him up, right, Austin? Right, yeah, that was uh, the reports earlier this year. Um, and he's also been playing at, at a right back, I, I believe, for Kortrick as well. So versatil- versatility is always good uh, when you're a defender. So that's another reason that maybe we should, uh, you know, call him up sometime in the near future. Maybe not, you know, this fall since we're playing some really, really big opponents. And we already have some established center backs like uh, we were talking off camera and we will talk about <laughs> again. But uh, yeah, Heinz Eich has looked well, Pat. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Com- yeah, completely agree. We do have a few other, uh, you know, solid uh, center backs, and it is nice to say <laughs> that the U.S. really does have some good defensive options. But again, yeah, definitely a player to uh, we'll keep uh, an eye on throughout this season here and see uh, how far he can push. Uh, maybe he can end up with uh, uh, Kenny Saif or uh, one of the other uh, uh, Ethan Horvath. No, it's tough. It's tough, man. It's tough. <laughs> it's all a lie. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, hoping all the best for him. He was actually, um, it's an interesting kind of side topic, interesting trend that some of these players are uh, either finishing college soccer or maybe playing a few years of college soccer and kind of finding themselves in Europe. I know there's a few other players. I can't think right now the names at the top of my head, but just kind of an interesting uh, little trend, I guess, kind of back a uh, uh, little side plot, I guess, if you may say. <laughs> Yeah, there was another player I just saw on Twitter too, who's in. Um, I think it's Ado Hang, whatever that team is in um, in the area of VC. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's in their U twenty one academy side or something, right. um, and he went to Elon, I believe. Yeah, I think it was. So Elon. That's, another that's uh, interesting. college player, yeah, going abroad. Yeah. It's maybe becoming but, a little bit of a trend, I guess. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. But uh, yeah, again, Austin. Um, yeah, that's just kind of. Checking in on Heinz Eich there, and uh, just kind of want to switch gears to you, uh, <laughs> and you can uh, you know take this know. here from uh, one of our uh, our favorites. Yeah, one of our favorites, but slowly becoming less and less of a favorite of uh, Schalke fans. It, it seems like, uh, and that would be Weston McKinney. So, so obviously, 
that that might have been a little too harsh. But uh, but West McKinney played 90 this weekend um, in a 2 0 loss uh, for for Schalke to Hertha Berlin. Um, played in a lot of different positions in this game, so I guess we shouldn't fault him too much. But he started off the game as kind of like a right back, um, and then switched, I believe, to more of like a right center back. Um, oh, I didn't see that. They actually started him right back. Center mid. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He um, what it looked like. So on foot mob, it said he played as a right center back. But when I watched gotcha. some of the game, I didn't see all of this game. Um, he was playing more as like a right back. Um, so like we've been talking about, or we have talked about in the past, Pat. We're we're not really a fan of seeing Wes McKinney play as a defender. Yeah, we were um, just saying that. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not happy to see that. Um, but yeah, he didn't he didn't play great in this game. Um, and again, that's I, I don't think that's really his fault. He was playing out of position most of the game. Um, and Chuck as a whole has kind of looked sluggish to start the season. So um, yeah, not not good to see. Um, and time will tell if Weston keeps his his starting position in the the Shaka first team. But to be fair, I don't think too many other uh, Shaka players have, have been playing great either. So can't pin it all on uh, Weston McKinney. That's to say true. The least, yeah. Shaka. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely an, an interesting playing style uh, they they have, and hopefully they can kind of uh, get back to where they were last season, which is fantastic. And uh, you know they're in the Champions League there, and uh, exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, at least that's something to uh, look forward to um, for Schalke at least coming up. So um, yeah, they need to get back on track uh, quickly though, because you know Bayern's out to a strong lead yet again. Uh. But, Who would have uh, thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll see Weston now uh, with the national team killing it in uh, the red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so final player for today would be uh, Keaton Parks. So Pat, how has uh, Keaton looked recently, and what's his situation at Benfica? Yeah, so guys, this is a, a little bit of a concern. A uh, yeah, like alert, <laughs> and not not a good way. But uh, yeah, Keaton's been uh, just kind of sticking with. Uh, uh, Benfica uh, B's team. Uh, he actually picked up an assist in their most uh, recent game. Uh, oh, okay. Pretty yeah. nice assist, but unfortunately, he was uh, left out of the uh, the Champions League uh, group stage roster there, which is a huge concern. And he really, I don't think he's featured at all, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for Benfica uh, yeah. so far. So it's kind we of were falling off the map a little bit for them. <laughs> yeah, which is concerning, Austin, because we were saying. Um, at the end of ya yeah, season one, <laughs> right. um, we were saying uh, he like this is a make or break kind. Of, he got some call ups and friendlies uh, that we saw in Philly, and this is his kind of time to really solidify him, his place in the ben- Benfica's first team and uh, with Champions League as well. There, there's a lot of game time going around, but it does not look like at the moment that he's in their plans. No, and that that's concerning to me. Uh, it was especially concerning over the summer when um, Pat, you saw he was here uh, with Benfica's team when they played Dortmund and Pittsburgh, um, and he he didn't even make the the game day squad for that game. Yeah. You think if they're in America, that they would play their American just to get some fanfare and you know uh, goodwill, I guess, from American fans. But they didn't even do that, so that kind of led me to believe that maybe we'll be in a little bit of a rough season here uh watching keaton parks up in fika yeah right maybe go back to a first team at what was it varzim or something (laughs) yeah yeah right maybe get loaned out again yeah but uh again we hope uh he can kind of get through this little rough uh rough time here and uh get back on the the first team radar yeah that's uh that's true so that's it for this part of the episode now let's go to our part about the u.s men's national team roster so the U.S. men's national team roster just was released on uh, Sunday. And, Pat, what were your first takeaways from this roster? I think the first takeaway is awesome. I kind of want to start in, in the back there. I think there's some exciting uh, defenders coming along uh, a lot in great form with John Brooks, uh, Jab, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, with, right. a, <laughs> with a dominant uh, Bundesliga uh, start and hopefully, fingers crossed, injury-free season. Uh, he looks commanding, almost the veteran there, uh, leading some of those other defenders as we have, uh, you know, again, um, Anthony Robinson, uh, DeAndre Yedlin, to name a few. Uh, just some very energetic, fast, uh, established uh, first team uh, uh, you know, players, which is exciting, in my opinion, from the defensive side of things. 
Yeah, and it was also um, kind of exciting to see a player like Aaron Long called in, um, who's been playing well for the New York Red Bulls all year. Um, and now we will finally get to, uh, you know, see what he can do um, in a U.S. men's national team jersey. So I thought that was a kind of interesting caveat to all those experienced players that you just brought up. Um, someone yeah. who has finally, you know, he's waited a while. I feel like he could have been called up a few different times. but Yeah, that's um, a good point, actually, because yeah, he's kind of been, um, again, a strong MLS presence and just kind of under the radar, I guess, national team wide. Uh, you know, wise. So that, that's exciting to see, Austin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the one interesting takeaway I had was that we don't we don't get to see, at least not in this camp, um, players like Romain Gall, Emmanuel oh, Sape, no. <laughs> um, Jonathan Amon, unfortunately. Um, so that was a little unfortunate, in my opinion. But because um, I, I really thought Romain Gall should have been on this roster. 100%, 100% agree with you in the part of Romain Gall. He's been killing it. And if you guys have been watching our show here, talk about him week in and week out, so you know he's killing it. Yeah. No, he's he's been lighting up the uh, El Svenskin. El yeah. Svenskin. In Malmo, uh, Austin. That's yeah. Pretty good team. Absolutely. Very good team. So, uh, that, yeah, I thought he should have been on that the roster for sure, at least for these two games. I um, thought he really could have played against uh, Brazil and looked, you know, at least decent, I guess, I guess you would say, but, like, you, sh- you should be able to play against all the competition we face this fall um, since he's playing for a team like Malmo um, and, and still, you know, look capable of being on the field with them. Um, but, yeah, maybe not so much with Emmanuel Sabi and Jonathan Moen since they're still very young players who haven't really experienced, you know, tough tests like playing against Brazil and Mexico. But I thought Romain Golf for sure should have been on this this team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you, yeah, all the points there. Maybe – uh, a little more in, in experience for uh, uh, Sabi and Amon, but yeah, again, like you said, Gall Gall should have been there. But another, uh, you know, interesting point. I guess we were kind of uh, uh, bring up too. Yeah, uh, Sha- Shaq Moore. Um, interesting. I know some people had mixed reactions just of him being there. I know he uh, had some appearances last year uh, for Levante there, but. Uh, you know, got loaned out as well um, to uh, Reus de Portillo, and he actually hasn't played a, a game yet. I know there's some registration problems, but but right, still right. hasn't been included, Austin. So just kind of wanted to get, I guess, your your thoughts on a, on a player like that and if maybe there are some other players that deserved it and just kind of, I guess, Shaq Moore's situation in general. Yeah, so I guess the one player you're alluding to that people thought should have been on this roster over him is uh, Reggie Cannon, who plays at FC Dallas, um, who's looked really good, you know, in the MLS all season, has gotten some assists recently uh, for Dallas there. So, yeah, I, I understand why people are a little maybe upset by this, but I think Shaq Moore showed us, um, at least against France, that he's a player who has a future with the men's national team. He did look and, good against France, Austin, you're right. Yeah, I thought he looked, you know, you know, well like like played very well and like yeah. looked capable of playing at that level well which is a lot to say against france who you know was the eventual world cup winners um but yeah it would have been it would have been cool to see reggie cannon but i have no problem with Shaq Moore. i don't know pat what do you what do you think about that uh, yeah i mean yeah i don't i don't have a huge problem either and if i you know sorry for any yeah viewers if i came off saying oh i agree with everyone like ah oh, Shaq Moore shouldn't be on there <laughs> um no I, I don't think that's the case i mean again i he, he performed well, like also said, in France. And maybe, again, I haven't looked too too much into uh, his situation at Rose yet, yet, but I know there yeah. were some issues uh, just with registration or some paperwork. So maybe that could be a cause. Uh, maybe it wasn't just kind of, you know, during training they didn't see something. So we don't, we don't really know the full story. Right. No, that's true to mention. And, yeah, that's a that's a big reason I think why he hasn't played yet for them. Um, so so what do you, yeah, what do you think of the striker pool though, Austin? As well, just kind of uh, some interesting options. <laughs> I know we have uh, you know some of our boys there, but just kind of want to, to gather your thoughts. Yeah, so it's interesting to see obviously Jesse's artist back. That's the the big uh, <laughs> the big uh, I guess wild card of uh, those striker those strikers there. Maybe you could say Andrea Novakovic is too, but. Um, yeah, I, I think it's um, – the striker pool is interesting. I, that's the only word I can really come up with for them. Um, you know, Bobby Wood is I, – I think he's a proven commodity. I think he's someone who 
maybe he doesn't score in every game he plays, but I think he does good things on and off the ball. Um, so I think he's he, he's justified in being in this camp. Andrea Novakovic, I think, should be there as well because, you know, me and you, Pat, have been talking about him, it seems like, ever since we started the show. And, he, you know, he's been doing very well overseas. And, and like we said, when we saw him in Philly, we were, uh, you know, impressed with him um, in that game. And I, I think he just deserves more looks uh, just to see, you know, what type of player he really is. And uh, then Jesse Zardes, you know, has been playing very well in the MLS. So I guess you can't slight him for getting the call up. Um, and yeah, I, I did yeah. say... I think earlier in the year on Twitter that, you know, I would be okay with Jesse Zardes getting called back into the national team if it's justified. But when we're calling him in last fall when he didn't really do anything to deserve a call up, I was a little, little ticked off by that, but <laughs> <laughs> no, completely under understand you there. Yeah. And again, just kind of you know, going along with the uh, Zardes and long, a few other players, it is, it is good to see kind of mixing in some of the uh, the MLS uh, uh, players there who have been performing very well. So again, kind of uh, again pushing the, the youth movement, but also kind of seems like slowly bringing back some of those veterans or kind of slowly integrating you know people in from different leagues and stuff. So it's it's kind of exciting to see uh, you know in, in the next few friendlies here, Austin. Yeah, for sure. I guess the final takeaway I want to squeeze in here real quick is uh, I think we're Happy to see uh, Sebastian Lejet and Paul Ariola back. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> red, white, and blue. Two players that we have, you know, we were really excited about um, during qualifying, and unfortunately, you know how that ended. But uh, yeah, Paul Ariola is one of my one of my favorites. So uh, really happy to see him back, and I hope he plays against. Obviously, I hope he plays in both games. But I think a player like him um, would be perfect in that game against Mexico. Where you got to be a little bit uh, scrappy and yeah. um, you know running around all game. Just he embodies to, uh, the, the American that like hardworking kind of grit mentality, Austin. Yeah, no, he definitely does, and I love him for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a exciting roster. Um, I guess we think it's an exciting roster, even though there's a few omissions that we thought uh, should maybe be there. But yeah, now let's uh, I guess move over to quick kicks. And now. The moment you guys have all been waiting for. Austin, what time is it? I think it's time for quick kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall. And that one is in. Josie Altador from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. And to start off the, the final segment here, guys, we have some unfortunate news out of Germany. That's right. And that, unfortunately, would be Christian Pulisic, who missed Dortmund's game over the weekend against Hanover, um, and then was also left off the U.S. men's national team roster due to a muscle injury. So we'll definitely keep you guys monitored, and let's hope Christian can come back quick and uh, get on the field again for Dortmund. And now to throw it over to uh, Spain and talk about a player, Pat, and who would that be? That's right, and that's uh, the Barca Academy youngster, Austin Conrad de la Fuente who's uh, moved up to Juvenil A and uh, played 83 minutes, I believe, in their 3-0 win. So it's great to see Conrad getting those uh, minutes and moving up the ladder, Austin. And also uh, switching gears back to Germany for a young Bayern Munich prospect. That's right. And that would be uh, Chris Richards, who scored his first goal for Bayern's U19s over the weekend. Um, it was a nice header off a corner for their third goal. Um, so congrats to uh, Chris. And you know we'll keep you guys posted on his development there at Bayern. And now to throw it over to England, Pat, and talk about a player. So who would that be? And that is none other than our boy, Anthony Robinson, who's been lighting it up uh, for Wigan in a 1-0 win, played 90 minutes against Rotterdam. So great stuff from Anthony and hope to keep seeing him get those consistent minutes. And uh, also uh, switching gears, Austin, to a, uh, a player that uh, I have a hard time saying his last name, but you can take it from here. <laughs> That's right. And that's a player we talked about in our very first episode of this season. And that would be Nick Giacchini, who actually is uh, at SM Khan's uh, academy right now, was playing for their U19 team, scored two goals this season, and then was promoted to their uh, reserve side, their number two team, and actually scored in his first game for them. So congrats to Nick. And uh, now we want to go over to uh, the Eredivisie, or the, the young Eredivisie, I guess you could say, Pat, and talk about a player. And that would be... That's right, Austin. That's uh, Serginho Dest. 
So again, he actually picked up an assist for Ajax as the U19s, and that's a fantastic academy. Um, and their three, you know, win against uh, Wilhelm, if I'm pronouncing that right, but a great result for uh, Ajax and uh, continuing the great form for uh, Serginho. And we hope to uh, hear more from him, Austin. But also kind of uh, switching gears back to uh, the Bundesliga with a team that we're kind of familiar with for a few years. That's right, and that would be a uh, Hanover, where Sebastian Soto is playing for their U19 team. They actually scored two goals this week um, for their U19 team and now has uh, four goals in five games. So Sebastian's really taken to uh, Germany well uh, to start his uh, U19 campaign. And now to finally throw it over to uh, France for uh, Pat, who would that be? <laughs> and that's uh, none other than our center back, Matt Miazga with uh, Nantes. And they actually uh, picked up a great 3-2 win. So getting that momentum back, uh, I think it was against Strasbourg. So... Great to see Miazga stand firm uh, for 90 minutes, and uh, uh, we hope that form continues. All right, guys, and to cap off uh, the last part of our segment here about the Young Yaz, uh, a segment that we've been kind of uh, doing at the end of our shows recently. But to start off, we got an exciting uh, young 17-year-old prospect here, and that is none other than Blaine Ferry, who uh, was on the U-17 World Cup team. And will also be, once he turns 18, signing with Kreuther Firth in uh, the Toon Bundesliga. So exciting stuff to uh, watch out there on the horizon. That's right. And the last player we want to talk about today is uh, Mason Judge, who's a 16-year-old defender who's also going overseas to Germany. And that would be for uh, Eintracht Frankfurt. So he just signed recently uh, about two weeks ago or a week ago. Um, so, yeah, it'll be really exciting to see both these players in uh, Germany in the up- upcoming season. And that's right. And speaking of uh, uh, Germany, there's a great thread to check out. Shout out to the Bund Americans uh, about the, this young, that's him, that's him, this young American players going over to Germany. So uh, always great content, Austin. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime. But yeah, that's uh, that kind of uh, concludes the uh, Young Yaz uh, segment. And uh, again, we'll kind of keep updating you. And as always, guys, thanks for watching today. Make sure you like this video and then also subscribe to our channel. And again, check out those Instagram and Twitter uh, social media pages. We're always putting out that content for you guys. That's right. Make sure you leave a comment uh, telling us you know, what you think about the U.S. men's national, t- national team roster and then also about any other players uh, we talked about in today's episode. We love to interact with you guys, as always. And, so, uh, uh, it's yeah. awesome, as always. Uh, we want to kind of... Uh, and the show how we usually do uh, with that very, uh, you know, uh, bold statement that you're going to make. <laughs> That's right. And that would be one day we will win the World Cup.